Tyrannosaurus Rex, we built full size. 9,000 pounds of a completely full size animatronic robotic machine. This is Richard Landon, mechanical designer for Stan Winston Studios on the original Jurassic Park project. Uh, I was in charge of creating the armature that supported the full-size sculpting stand for the T-Rex. I'm Mike Tersick, and I was one of the artists fortunate enough to work on this project. This is Shane Mahan, and we'll be talking about the creation of the sculpture of the full-size T-Rex from the first Jurassic Park. Over there, a little bit more this way. Good, okay, go back the other way. Here's Stan, talking to Steven Spielberg into the camera. It's all for you, Steven. We love dinosaurs. You're watching a very quick progression. That small fifth scale sculpture that you saw was the basis of these parts and components that you see now. We took the, uh, the fifth scale, which was sculpted, and then it was cut like so many loaves of bread, if you can imagine that. Each piece was then numbered, and then the parts are cut out so that they can fit over the structure the metallic structure that's going to support these pieces. So it's basically like constructing a, uh, a hull of a ship. You can see 15, 16, so on and so on. And how that was done was, was the, the parts were numbered top to bottom, analyzed, and then put on, a, on an opaque projector. And the projector was then uh, projected on the wall to the correct scale, and then the wood was cut accordingly. So it was all done by eye and mathematics and a lot of calculations. God, it was just an incredible undertaking, really, when, when I think back on it, that, uh, uh, that we actually managed to pull this off. Uh, there was so much ingenuity. Everybody really pulled together and, and really made this work. There's the uh, miniature uh, that Rich did, uh, and uh, the armature, and then the, the full-size armature in the background. I believe those are the legs as well, the you see the, the tall pieces. So we're just about to get ready here and, and place the, um, the bulkheads on. We were actually using uh, techniques that were developed, you know, hundreds and hundreds of years ago by, by sculptors of large uh, bronzes and such. There's the fifth scale painted and that was our, our, get, our guide and our gauge for the, for the reconstruction, because what we had to do is reconstruct the sculpture from scratch. And Stan would come in on a regular basis and say, okay, I want to be sure that I've got room for the nostrils, I've got room for the eyes. Um, are you sure the spacing is correct? And that would not only mathematically prove on paper that it was correct, but then I had to also have to satisfy him artistically. And we would adjust little things like um, the how much the belly would hang or how much the tail would droop and some things weren't exactly the same as the original um, plan structure but we changed it so that the artist liked it because it's the artist's eye that always decided what the, fine, what the final product was there it stands. Now uh, the process of chicken wire and fiberglass is laid over the, the, the chassis of the, of the creature's body this is to to give the clay something to to stick to without going right through the wire because at some point the weight would just push through respirators doors are open okay now many weeks later many many weeks later in this process the 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 first layers of clay are just being sort of drafted into place this takes many days and this is Roma clay. This is not a sulfur free clay. This is Roma clay. I think it's a number two or, or number three medium clay. And uh, those are gauge sticks. Those sticks that you see in there are gauges of thickness for the calculation of skin and, and where bones may go. What we had to do was we would take the, the fifth scale little castings and, and using the measurements recreate everything. Mike Tursick was in charge of, of sculpting the head predominantly. My focus was uh, the head uh, and neck area. Uh, I wanted to make sure that uh, I could keep that as accurate as possible. Uh, by this time I, 
I knew the sculpture pretty intimately because I'd done the fifth scale and the small scale, and here we are on the big one. Uh, so basically everybody, if they had a sculpting question, they ran to me and for, uh, for answers. It was somebody's job every morning to cut clay from the packages and put pallets of clay in the uh, oven in the other side of the building early in the morning to heat it up so that the clay was warm. This whole process uh, from, from start to finish took 16 weeks to complete, just, just for the sculpture, not, not talking about molding it and casting it. I believe it was just for the sculpture. Uh, I would close my eyes at night and see scale patterns. <laughs> this neat little tool I made. It's kind of cool. Very nice. It's got a, got a little round Fantastic tool design. You could, you could do this. Before, see the primitive method was with this, and you would have to do this and then turn it. <laughs> I actually, uh, I remember I... Uh, I put my uh, initials MT up on uh, the top of the T-Rex head, and uh, Stan saw it. He said, what's this? <laughs> and uh, quickly I said, Stan, you're looking at it upside down. That's not an MT. That's a WI for Winston Incorporated. <laughs> the teeth here are, are just being, have been mocked up out of foam core to get the look the absolute look of how it's going to feel. But you can see like all the subtlety of wrinkles, scales. You know, this this character had to feel 100% real or the film just did not work. Each sculptor would bring their, their favorite technique and their little tricks of the trade. Some of them would take the clay and stir it up with alcohol or acetone and liquefy it and then they could apply sort of a sluice that almost looked like uh, aged skin drawn out over an area. Other guys had different tools and techniques that they would try and teach the other guys to, to use. And over the course of the three months of the sculpture, they ended up uh, doing a really good job of doing a really unified look. Everyone had their own contribution, and yet the T-Rex looked like one creature, not a patchwork quilt of various styles. There's the full-size T-Rex really kind of coming together. You can see the legs are on. Um, she still needs her small arms up there at the base of her neck, but she's standing up into the top of the building. They actually had to raise the roof, literally, so that when she began moving and they did the mechanical structure, that she'd have somewhere to go. The small forearms were sculpted on a separate stand down a little closer to the ground, and then Stan would request on a regular basis that the whole thing be assembled so that you could tell the proportions were all correct that uh, everything looked right in relation to one piece to the next. Well, Spielberg came by on a regular basis too. He stayed very involved in how it looked. The legs were originally aluminum structures on the exterior. You can see the aluminum sticking out of the side and that ended up being not enough to support the weight so we had to change to steel ex exoskeletons to sort of hold up all that weight. Thank you very much for watching. The creation of the T-Rex was monumental in the history of Stan Winston studio and it was one of Stan's great and most uh, prized creations of, of creatures that he had done. I'm Richard Landon. Thank you for watching the behind the scenes and the creating the full-size Tyrannosaurus Rex sculpture. Uh, it was a huge personal point of pride for me that Stan trusted me to create something so large and so heavy having had no background before. We all grew out of makeups and terminators and little tiny things and for Stan to embrace this group of people as having the ability to step up and grow up and build something this fantastic and gigantic was a huge point of personal pride. God, I haven't seen this video in years and uh, again looking back at this I'm, uh, I, I again I can only wonder what were we thinking?